done the job that you guys did with all the work you did preparing us to get ready for this, for school. It's unbelievable all the work that you did. And we're gonna need that. When we open face to face, we are going to need that. But at this point, because there was so much work to do, I don't know that we had time to go out and properly communicate all of this information to both the staff and the parents. And we've heard it over and over again that there's so many questions and so much uncertainty out there about exactly what's going to happen. And with all of that in place, you know, we've stated from the very beginning, our number one goal is safety. Everybody in this room knows what the safest thing to do is. That's not a question. And I question, even at this point, with where we're at now, maybe even educationally, virtual might be a better option. Um, I thought Nancy made some tremendous points at the last board meeting that, that uh, really had me thinking. If I'm allowed to make a motion, I want a motion right now that because we've got, I think, so much more work to do in developing, communicating, and making everybody comfortable with what we're doing, that we start virtual with the intention of going to face-to-face -face when the numbers and the situation dictates that it's safe to do so. Um, we hear staff members that are very, very concerned about coming back. I'm sure they will if, they, if, they're, if they're required to. Um, but I think for everybody's sake, the best thing that we can do, let's start virtual with the intention of coming back face to face. I kind of wonder if the option is, you know, because it's not many people saying, ah, we're probably going to be able to continue this. They're saying we'll continue it until we have to cut it down and then we'll shut it down. I'm worried about that. Are we going to have school face to face for one month and then be done for eight months? Or could we perhaps have virtual for one month and then come back and perhaps we're able to go face to face for eight months? I think that would be a better option. I would like to motion that we start the year. 100% virtual with the intention of going to face-to-face -to -face if and when we're ready to do it. I'll second that. Any motion in a second? Discussion? Tim, do you have any uh, suggestions or thoughts on what you just suggested? Would you be looking at reviewing this month to month, quarter, semesterly um, what's your vision on that well you, I, I think one part of the vision is now because you're right we're two weeks away we're two weeks away from opening up and now we can focus on we're gonna need the virtual piece either way so let's get the virtual piece ready to go and let's have it awesome let's get that ready to go then I think what we do is what we've talked about before I mean how many board meetings have we now talked about Okay, what's the, what's the number? What's the number? When are we going to uh, end face-to-face -face and go virtual? I think it gets, gives us time to develop that and say, okay, now what's the number? At what point? When we get down to 3.2 cases per thousand, two cases per thousand, one case per thousand, what's the number where we can go face-to-face -face, and when that number comes around, we'll make the transition to face-to-face. -to -face. The other thing I think it allows us to do is I thought people made a great point of, with the metrics from Sauk County, it looks like we should maybe be in a hybrid model. I don't think we have time to adequately, adequately develop that right now. But if we did start 100% virtual, it would allow us to look at the option of gradually phasing in, as it was recommended by Gwen, using the hybrid and then, then the uh, full face-to-face, -face, we would have time to develop it. I would suggest our Wednesday early release times would be a great time to develop that. And so we just set a benchmark as to at this point, we, we can start going hybrid or we can start going to the face-to-face -face or virtual model um, so, so people still have a choice. So I, I think we would have some more time 
to find that point and set it. You know, uh, this COVID-19 thing in schools, and it's almost all I think about. It's like all consuming. Yep. In fact, if you had made your, um, <laughs> if you had made your motion at 2 a.m. this morning when I was lying awake thinking about it, my vote would have been one way. And then after thinking about it all day today, my vote, you know, would, would go another way. Um, you know, I've, I've said I'm not an epidemiologist or an infectious disease expert, and I would defer to scientists at the CDC and Wisconsin DHS and Sauk County Health Services on whether it was safe to open or not. And those experts have given us all kinds of guidance on how to open face to face, you know, six foot distancing, wear masks, etc. Um, however, it's clear to me they're not going to weigh in on whether or not we should open. They prefer to pass that responsibility to us and uh, to say that lack of leadership on a national, state, and local level is disappointing to me would be an understatement. Um, you know, we always hear about the horror stories, but it's, um, I think it's important to note there are organizations that have been able to operate, um, sometimes in very high risk environments with little transmission. Airlines are flying. I haven't heard about many cases traced to them. My own wife works in an assisted living facility with a really vulnerable population. And they're very strict about the protocols of face masks and hand washing and social distancing. And there have been several employees who have tested positive, but there's been no transmission among the residents. So I, I think it's possible to do this if you follow the protocols, if you do the fundamentals, right? And so I think the whole thing is going to boil down to is whether or not we can execute, whether or not we can do the social distancing, maintain the social distancing, and whether we wear masks. If we can execute the fundamentals well, I think we can do this. And. Um, Time will tell whether or not we'll, we're able to accomplish that if we decide to move forward with face to face. I, I think it's just so hard to find other businesses to prepare to schools because, like uh, the retirement home, I'm sure they are isolated. You know, I'm sure they don't put uh, 20 residents in the same room and tell them you have to stay six feet apart. I mean, they are isolated in their rooms no, with no, their no now I understand no analogy is perfect right it's very saying. tough to our students aren't you know 90 to 100 years yeah. old yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, airlines I think they're going to be much there's much more distancing it's, it's so hard to find a business that we can compare to this to say yes they've operated successfully under under these these guidelines um, and I guess I don't want to be the well let's give it a try and see what happens Kind of, I mean, we know what's going to happen. It's just a matter of how severely it's going to happen if we can continue this. I completely, I, your, your, I, your I, position I is completely my, understandable to me. And like I say, yeah. I've been in, thought that way, then I think another way, and then, and that's why I'm up at 2 a.m. and your, your timing was just. Can, is it, can I defer my motion until 2 a.m. this morning? <laughs> <laughs> we can vote on that. Well, we can move on. I was livid because I understand that they're at the district office. But anyway, so that's where my brain is going right now. Um, but I don't want to say too much because you guys uh, had to uh, endure a lot of um, me speaking at our last meeting. But I, I will just say that one of my concerns 
is that if we only end up being able to stay open for a week or three weeks or a month, this time that we're spending now scrambling to try to reopen successfully, I'm afraid we'll look back and we'll regret that we didn't concentrate on our, our efforts on developing a robust virtual program. Mm -hmm. And I had a teacher tell me today that she has had no um, personal development about virtual teaching all summer long. And so I view this as a loss of, you know, I think what Tim said, if we make the decision now, we can really um, concentrate our efforts on making a good virtual program. Um, I fear that if the longer we continue moving toward trying to reopen in person, the less prepared we're going to be to reopen a robust virtual program. And that's all I'm going to say tonight. Any other comments? Cool. Yeah, well, I just had a short comment, and I know it, it uh, might sound naive, but I truly believe this. Um, educationally, what uh, the kids have lost, whether it's seven months or, you know, our kids with autism, I mean, they're, they're losing a lot with all the social, whatever. I can speak, you know, to each one, but I firmly believe that our educational staff, when it comes time, can help those kids with individualized education. It's, I mean, it's going to be necessary. And, um, you know, it'll take, take a long time, but we can do that, okay? We can't do anything about COVID, unless somebody gets it. We have no impact. So, that's all I'm gonna say. No, I, I was just gonna reiterate my points from last week. You know, this is probably gonna be a split vote again, and that certainly does not mean that this is a divided board. I mean, I appreciate everybody's insight I really don't need to hear about Nancy's dreams and nightmares. <laughs> but, but I'm willing to endure that, okay? Because I appreciate all of her efforts and, and, and the thoughts that she provides and, and the statistics and her viewpoint. Um, and so I, I just want to reemphasize that I'm glad to be part of this board and you know, I know we'll keep moving forward doing the best thing that we can. There's, it's, it's hard to dispel anything from either side of the opinion here. Um, if we do indeed plan to go virtual, I sure hope that there is going to be things in place that will address the facts that um, there's been a tremendous spike in youth depression. There's been a tremendous spike in youth suicide. There's been a tremendous spike in domestic abuse. And once again, I want to reiterate, we are the safe haven of kids. And um, this is, this is gut-wrenching to say the least. Um, it's, it's difficult to move forward without having an endorsement from our staff to go face to face. And I sure understand their anxiety and their uh, concerns as well. But again, it is my hope that we do address those things that isolation has caused amongst our youth because there is no denying that as well. this point forward move forward with implementing virtual learning uh, eliminating the face-to-face -face. and at this point if clarified correct me if I'm wrong Tim um, eliminating the hybrid option and the face-to-face -face option strictly moving forward with the virtual yes that's the motion yes. the second to the motion was Nancy you understand that as well yes okay can I ask a clarifying question sure um, with going fully virtual um, I just want to be clear for our planning team, if that is the decision, would minimal student capacity be a consideration for students with disabilities, students who have specialized services that 
we need to provide face-to-face. -face. So I just offer that as a consideration in your motion. I would like direction. What, what Mr. Allen, I would like. like to clarify your motion and this hand to amend, amend the motion. Yes. For small group. Minimal capacity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would, I would, yeah, enter that into my motion, yes. You would accept that? Yeah. 